The expressways had another impact in the 1950s and 60s. They spawned modern suburbs that sprouted on former farmland near highway exits. To emphasize the feeling of a country life, developers often laid out suburban streets on a curving pattern entirely different from the urban street grid. This idea of a planned community designed to look natural was pioneered a century before the interstates in west suburban Riverside, one of America's first planned suburbs. In 1869, the famous designers of New York's Central Park, Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vaux, were commissioned to design a bedroom community on farmland along the Des Plaines River. Inspired by a scenic bend in the river, Olmsted and Vox created sinuous streets that wind through a pastoral landscape. They mandated that homes be set back from the street, creating the all-American front lawn. What made this first generation of American suburbs possible? It was the railroad. So-called railroad suburbs popped up all around Chicago in the 19th century, allowing city workers to sleep each night in the country, at least those who could afford it. Even areas that are now part of the city were rural retreats in the 1800s. Like Auburn Park with its scenic lagoon, a remnant of the wetland that was drained to develop the community in the late 1800s. Today it offers a welcome respite in Auburn Gresham a neighborhood with a strong community organization working hard to recover from decades of population loss and disinvestment. Norwood Park on the northwest side was envisioned as a resort area back in the 1860s. The center of the subdivision is a perfect oval. Even the alleys. The most surprising subdivision out here is buried in a forest along the Chicago River's meandering north branch. Old Edgebrook was built in the 1890s for officials of a nearby railroad. But plans to build a larger commuter suburb here fizzled. The undeveloped land was bought by the forest preserves in 1918, leaving this unusual urban island. In the 1950s, several developers built suburban-style subdivisions within the city, like Scottsdale in Ashburn, built on the site of Chicago's first airport, Ashburn Flying Field, which lost most of its business after nearby Midway took off.
Jeffrey Manor and Marionette Manor in South Deering were developed for returning World War II veterans, many Jewish, who worked in nearby factories. Today, it's majority African-American. 